Before I started my uh, first ever bicycle tour, I knew I needed something better than what I had. And I've never had an e-bike, but I went to an energy fair in Redding, California in 2015, and I saw this thing. A Pedego Stretch Cargo Bike. And I was intrigued. It was pretty cool looking. It had brilliant colors. Blue, this color. It was a army green, too. I like the rack system. You'll notice in the back, there's uh, something sticking up that actually folds down and extends. Actually, it doesn't fold down. It, it's bolted in place. Then the ones on the rear tire, the ones that are low next to the tire, they can be actually brought up to the top rack, bolted on, and turn it into a nice large bed. There's also the front rack, which holds a substantial amount of stuff. That black object underneath the seat, that's the battery. 11 pounds, 48 volts, 17 amp hours, which was the maximum they had at that time. And of course, the rear motor is a 50, no, 500 watt motor, and that's as high as you can get. It had all sorts of configurations. You could do all sorts of things with it. I found it to be a very useful bicycle in that respect. It had a throttle control on the handlebars. Handlebars could be adjusted. The seat could be adjusted. It had a headlight and a taillight, which came with it. And notice the kickstand at the bottom. It's motorcycle grade. So are the spokes and the tires. <laughs> and it had all sorts of configurations, like I said. And... There were also accessories. This one shows off how you can put two little chairs in the back for your children and take them on a stroll somewhere. This one was a guy that was riding his bicycle from Ash, um, let's see, Ashland, Oregon, all the way to Patagonia, South America. In case you don't know where that is, it's in Argentina, down at the bottom of South America, the tip. Yeah, he went. He, I don't. I guess he made it. I hope he did. <laughs> And this guy, he built a solar panel slash canopy for his bicycle, for that particular stretch, to provide power while he rode his bike and shade. Now, this sounds like a good idea, but then when you think about how much maintenance you got to do on the tires, and then you have to deconstruct all this apparatus, I really didn't want to go along with that. But I still was interested in the bike, so I got one. The guy I bought this from... He said that the army green looked pretty cool. The brown seat and the brown handlebars went with it. So I installed a, a two sets of panniers in the back. And that folded up thing over there is a collapsible um, cool bag, such as the one in the front too. And I use this thing as a truck. I used it to do everything. And I do mean everything, including haul bags of compost. I even hauled... Uh, large trash cans, not like these, but the old uh, cylinder barrel types. They could do it. And then I uh, coupled it up with my old Burley Nomad cargo trailer. This thing is old. It's, at the time, it was about 15 years old. I put so many patches on it, uh, canvas patches on the bottom because I kept punching holes through it. And plus, it was made in America and no longer it's made in China and doesn't look anything like this. The straps I have on top were to uh, keep the tarp from flying off because it is so old that the elastic bands which were holding it in place had worn out. I've replaced the tubes countless times. The little flag there is sitting in a pocket that I had to hot glue at the top because it was peeling off and then it, the flag pole itself punched a hole through the bottom of the pocket so I took a sharpie pen I was spent, opened it up, took the white part of it, and stuck it down in the pocket so that it would act as a uh, second pocket to hold the flag in. It worked pretty well. Coupled with uh, the cargo bike, this trailer works great. I mean, I can actually dismantle it and turn it into a flatbed, and you can see how cavernous it is inside. So this is what I chose to take with me on the first expedition, my first bicycle tour up to Lassen National Park. 
Here's the configuration I used. The uh, rear trailer held the sleeping bag, tent, canister of food, all sorts of other stuff. The four panniers, they held clothing, electronics, maps, everything. That top bag in the rear, that blue one, that held more food. And the front bag held even more food, because I figured I was going to be out for a long time and eating like a maniac, but actually I never did. I brought a lot of this stuff home because I, well, it got really hot up there. But this turned out to be a very good bike. I named it Squeaker, <clears throat> because while you moved, it squeaked here and there a lot. And you don't ride it like a regular bicycle. It was an entirely different ride. On a standard analog bicycle, you feel it in your thighs and in your calves. This one you don't. It's more like a leisurely ride, like a extra cycle. But it was my truck, my car, and it got me where I wanted to go for 236 miles. And more than that, I put about 12,000 miles on this thing. Although the uh, console kept breaking, sometimes from accidents, sometimes from just maintenance, putting this, taking the, we the rear wheel off this thing is a bear because of all the, the, I call it scaffolding, but it's all the metal truss work. Plus, the, count, the, con the, the uh, consoles at the time, they only went to 4,000 miles and then they just stopped working. It was a defect. They don't do that anymore now, finally. It was a, it's a good bike. It served me well.